Hello everyone. We meet again in this channel, Article Technology Indonesia. And this video, is the last part of our videos that discuss about boiler classification. Of course if you haven't watched the two previous part, please just click the link in the description of this video. In the previous two videos we discussed the types of fire tube and water tube boilers. Actually, we classify the two types of boilers into one type of boiler based on the relative position of water with steam. If you visit our website technologyarticles.com, besides we classify boilers based on the relative position of water with steam, we also classify the boiler into three other types. They are the classification of boilers based on the method of water circulation, based on work pressure, and the last is based on the fuel used. And here is the explanation of those type of boiler. Classification of boilers based on water circulation method. In water tube boilers, the circulation of water in boiler pipes is important to pay attention. Good boiler water circulation not only will increase boiler efficiency, but also important to maintain boiler durability. This is because the water in the boiler also has a function as a cooling medium. Any water circulation tardiness, resulting high thermal stress on the pipe, and could lead to boiler explosion. That's why, there are known two types of boilers based on the way of water in boiler circulated. Here are both. Natural circulation boiler. Boilers with natural water circulation do not use external energy to circulate water inside the pipes. The water in the boiler is naturally circulated due to a phenomenon called thermosiphon. Thermosiphon is a siphon effect which occurs due to density differences between low temperature and high temperature water. Naturally, high temperature water will have a relatively lower density. Therefore, the hot water will flow upward naturally and the cold water will move downward through boiler pipes. Because of this process, the water in the boiler pipes will naturally circulate it. Boilers with natural circulation include Gurney boilers, Babcock and Wilcox boilers, O-type boilers, and so on. Forced circulation boiler. Boilers with forced circulation use additional pumps to help the circulation of water. This type of boiler does not need to wait for water phase differentiation to be able to circulate water. With the help of external energy for the process of water circulation, the process of generating steam will not be limited by the size of the boiler again. In other words, we can increase boiler capacity by only adding the circulating pump in the same size of boiler. When compared, forced circulation boilers can produce 20 times more steam than natural circulation boilers that have the same volume size. The examples of forced circulation boilers include Benson boilers, and subcritical boilers. Classification of boilers based on their working pressure. In accordance with technology advancements, the quality of boiler steam also continues to improve. The boiler designers believe that the higher steam pressure can be achieved, the boiler efficiency will be higher too. So the following are the classification of boilers based on the steam pressure produced. Low pressure boiler. This boiler produces 15 to 20 bar of steam. Medium pressure boiler. This boiler produces steam from 20 to 80 bars. High pressure boiler. This boiler produces steam pressure above 80 bar. Subcritical boiler. The critical point of a boiler is a condition where boiler steam reaches a temperature of 560 degrees Celsius at a pressure of 221 bar. If a boiler works below these conditions, the boiler is called a subcritical boiler. Typically subcritical boilers are designed to work at 160 bar and steam temperature of 538 degrees Celsius. Supercritical boiler. If a boiler works above its critical point, the boiler is called a supercritical boiler. 
Supercritical boilers have better fuel efficiency than subcritical boilers. Supercritical boilers have a design efficiency value of around 42%, while subcritical boilers can only reach 38%. This is due to the impossibility of the forming of saturated steam in the supercritical boiler cycle. As a result of the working pressure and temperature above the critical point, the water will not experiencing the nucleate boiling phase. Nucleate boiling phase is a transition process of water from liquid to steam. One main characteristic of the supercritical boilers is the absence of steam drum which to separate water from saturated steam as in the subcritical boilers. Ultra supercritical boiler, above the critical point, higher working pressure and temperature of the boiler will surely increasing the boiler efficiency. To achieve this, more sophisticated and expensive boiler pipe material technology is needed. In the last few decades, it has been possible to make the intended material, so that a present the boiler design has been able to reach the working point very far above the critical point. The boiler that we know as the ultra supercritical, abbreviated as USC, has an operational point of around 260 bar and a temperature of 700 degrees Celsius. This modern boiler has a theoretical efficiency value of up to 46%. Classification of boilers based on their energy sources is in accordance with technological advances as well. Now there are so many sources of energy that can be used as a source of boiler fuel. Boilers developed at the beginning of its history only used fossil fuels, now there are several boiler technologies that can use renewable energy. The following are among them. Coal-fired boiler Coal is the most commonly used fuel in large capacity boilers, including in the United States. The price is cheap, abundant, especially in coal-producing countries including United States, high heating values and other reasons are making coal the most popular boiler fuel to date. The use of coal as boiler fuel requires special process which is not carried out on other types of boilers. The characteristic of solid coal, the average size as big as your fist, requires a grinding process before it is burned in the boiler combustion chamber. The main objective of this process is to increase the coal surface area so it can burn effectively. Not only that, the treatment of coal-fired boiler flue gas is also different from other boilers. This boiler flue gas contains ash, carbon dioxide, sulfur, tinox. Some processes to eliminate this wastes are need to be considered. Like the use of electrostatic precipitator to remove ash, then the use of flue gas desulfurization to remove sulfur, and also the use of staggered combustion technology to minimize the formation of NOx. The complexity of coal-fired boiler design makes the boilers economical not as good as oil-fired boilers if used on a small scale. Therefore, coal-fired boilers are widely used for sub-critical to ultra-supercritical production scales. Oil-fired boilers are quite popular for small-scale use only. This is due to the simpler design than a coal-fired boiler. Fuel oil are commonly used for fire tube boiler. This boiler type is only a require main component of burner and the tube network for the flow of the hot gas which is made inside a water tank. These boilers generally use diesel fuel, or commonly known as high-speed diesel. The simple design makes this boiler very suitable for the production of low-pressure steam with low steam production capacity. As the name implies, Nuclear boilers use nuclear technology as a source of heat. This boiler is very popular for use in nuclear power plants. In nuclear-powered boilers, the heat energy from the fission reaction inside a nuclear reactor is absorbed by the coolant material which can be gas, liquid, or even liquid metal, depending on the type of reactor. This cooling material then flows into the boiler and is used to heat water so that it changes phase to steam. In nuclear power plants, the steam produced is supplied into turbines to generate electricity. One major risk of using a nuclear reactor is of course the radioactive hazard. Therefore, nuclear reactors are always made inside a dome to prevent radioactive leakage. The dome is made by strong concrete material which not only to prevent radioactive leakage, but also to resist disturbances from the outside natural disaster. Solar concentrated powered boiler 
The boiler we will discuss next is a new technology. This boiler uses a very renewable source of energy from the sunlight. Although sunlight is only available during the day, this boiler can operate 24 hours a day. Thanks to the special fluid called molten salt, that able to store heat from the sunlight. Solar concentrated boilers use main component of large number of mirrors, arranged around a heat receiver tower. The mirrors are positioned in such a way that the reflection of the sunlight captured by each mirror is reflected centrally to the heat receiver tower. Each mirror component is equipped with an automatic mechanism, so that it can move following the sun. With this system, the direction of the sunlight reflection always leads to the heat receiver tower. A mechanism is used to circulate the cold molten salt into a heat receiver tower. It is estimated that the heat caught in this tower can reach 1,500 times hotter than what we normally feel. The heat is absorbed by the molten salt and stored in a special thermal storage tank. Then, through a heat exchanger, the water absorbs the heat from the molten salt so that the water boils and reaches the superheat temperature. In concentrated solar power plants, this steam is then used to rotate steam turbines and produce electricity. Many solar concentrated power plants are built in Spain, United States, Australia, South Africa, India, and a little in China. Waste to energy boiler are the most environmentally friendly solution for two problems at once, garbage and fossil fuel crisis. Waste production that continues to increase every time becomes possible to be used as boiler fuel. Waste to energy boilers are not different from other biomass boilers. First, the waste is brought to the facility. Then, the waste is sorted to remove recyclable and hazardous materials. The waste is then stored until it is time for burning. A few plants use gasification process, but mostly combust the waste directly because it is more efficient. The waste can be added to the boiler continuously or in batches, depending on the design of the plant. It is known that waste-to-energy boilers have a friendlier emission level than the coal-fired boilers. This is due to the absence of sulfur pollutants as contained in coal. Waste-to-energy power plants have been used for more than two decades in Sweden. Now many more have been built in China, United States, and many other countries. Okay, those are the classification of boilers that we have summarized from so many sources. If you need the article version of this theme please just visit our website at www.technology-articles.com. And don't forget to always click likes to each of our videos. For those of you who have not joined us, please subscribe to our channel Article Technology Indonesia.